In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this viral car edit using Blender and CS2. I'm Alex with Level Up Plus VFX. Make sure to scroll down and hit the like button. Open up Blender. Let's go. The very first thing you're going to need to do, of course, is get some CS2 maps into Blender. And luckily, there's a plugin that does just that. It's called Source.io. It'll be linked in the description. And go ahead and download that and install it like you would any normal plugin and once you do you can search it up in your add-ons tab and go ahead and enable it and we'll be ready to go something else you're going to need to make sure you have obviously is going to be cs2 installed if you don't have it you won't be able to import the maps i'm sure there's some wacky way you could just download the map files but i mean cs2 is already free so this should be no problem for anyone once the plugin is installed and enabled we can go to file import and we'll see now that we have a source engine assets option down in the import tab for us we're going to be wanting to import source 2 packed maps that's going to be the normal map file that you see in a lot of cs2 games that's dot vpk not exactly what that stands for but we'll go ahead and click on that and we're going to navigate over to our steam counter-strike library from here we're going to want to go to game csgo and then maps and we'll see all of our maps that we have installed for csgo including any workshop maps that you may have gotten for me i'm going to install nuke but i'm not just going to install nuke there are two different versions of nuke and one is slightly lighter it's the one they use for your main menu and for the end screens and that's going to be d nuke and i think they call it vanity we'll search it up we'll do d nuke and you'll see vanity and you'll see the file size is much smaller this makes it just easier to import there are thousands of assets for every single level and so importing just a few makes it a little bit easier so let's go ahead and import the vanity version for now once we've done that we'll see all we get are a bunch of lights don't worry, that's totally normal. In order to actually get the map into Blender, we need to individually import each asset separately. Hitting N on my keyboard, we can scroll to the bottom and we'll now have a source.io plugin option. If we click on an object, we can see we're getting given the option to load an entity. And now you can select multiple at once. However, note that if you select too many and try to import it, it will crash Blender. This is just a bug with the plugin at the moment and I'm sure they'll fix it in the future. But for now, you just need to import bits and pieces at a time. Finally, in order to get this to import properly, you're gonna to wanna to disable use BVLG and disable use instances. So now that that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and load entity and it's gonna load for a bit and we'll see we get a bunch of stuff in the scene. And then we're gonna go through and we're gonna do that from the next batch. And we're just gonna go through until all of these are imported. And you'll know an object is imported properly if you click on the null here and it doesn't give you an option to import it. All right, now that the map is fully installed, we can actually see what we're working with here. And it seems like we just have ramp, hell, and uh, it looks like trophy area over here. That's because again, the vanity maps aren't the full maps. I'm going to delete this uh, material that's just in the middle of the scene. I think this is for like a spoke card or something, but since you aren't actually able to see it, just deleting it makes it a little bit easy to navigate around, to make navigating around and looking at everything just a little bit easier because it's so easy to accidentally go outside the map and then it's hard to focus on something is I'm going to go over to my viewport properties and I'm going to turn on backface culling. Now one issue we will have is that all the lights also imported from the CS2 map and this is helpful in some ways but unrealistic in others. Like you can see if we exposure down we can see all the reflections from these lights. That's because in maps like these they are prioritizing keeping visibility for everything so players can see each other clearly, even if it isn't super accurate. So in order to reflect real life a bit more, what we're going to do is we're going to delete all of these physically accurate lights, and we're gonna have all these lights on the walls be the actual lights. Of course, these objects come with an emission strength texture already in here. As you can see, we have fluorescent light on color. And if we look through that now, set it to something probably like a thousand, if you want it super dark and accurate, you could set it to again like 100 and then you would have to bump up your exposure. We'll actually set that back to default. Actually, 100 is not too bad. It's just a little dark for my taste. So I'm going to set this to 500. And you'll notice at the moment that this is actually a pretty intensive scene. Even on my 4090, we're getting a lot of noise and it's struggling to sample everything. But lucky for us, in this particular use case, noise is perfectly fine. 
Now, of course, if you actually wanted to optimize this scene for less noise, like I did here, all you would need to do is instead of just pumping up the emission strength of these tubes, you would go ahead and put some area lights right in front of them. You can do Alt-D to duplicate them around. I'm going to delete that duplicated one. And you would duplicate them all in front of your light sources and then bring the light source back down to a normal value like 5 or 1. This is because emissive textures create a lot more noise than using actual light sources. So using a rect light like this instead of the actual tube light as the source for the scene light will make it render much faster. However, this isn't a huge problem because at the end of the day, any imperfections that happen in this render will be passed off as something that is, you know, stylistic and looks like old film. Now, of course, the next thing we need to do is actually import our object. For this render, I found this car on Sketchfab. However, there are plenty of free models you could use for an edit like this. You could have it be cars, motorcycles, or really anything in between. The thing that really sells this effect, though, is the camera movements. All right, I've gone ahead and imported my car, and just a few quality of life things I did is I parented these wheels to empties here, and I also parented the entire object to an empty, that way it just makes it a little easier to move around instead of having to grab each individual part or select everything. You can just select the empty and move the car around and, and animate it. Looking through the rendered view, we can see that it already comes in with most of the textures applied. There's one thing I did add, which is I just threw in some point lights in the back here for the brake lights. Just makes it a little bit more realistic when we're rendering. But now for the good stuff. This already looks pretty real, but how do we make it look YouTube edit real, you know, the fun stuff? Well, that's actually pretty easy. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves a camera here. I actually am going to focus on the object and import a camera, and I'm going to drag this out over here just for now. We'll set our resolution to 1080 by 1920, so it's a vertical resolution. And when we look through the camera, if we hit N on our keyboard, scroll to the top, at the view option and do camera to view. Now we can look through our camera wherever we're moving. But a normal camera isn't really gonna cut it because if we just look through the render view now, you know, it looks exactly how it did before. But how do we add all of those effects that people do in those YouTube videos? This doesn't look super real. It looks flat and boring and like every other render I've seen. Well, there's a few things we can do. First, we're gonna wanna make this a little bit wider. Wider angle is pretty normal for something like this, but just a wide angle won't do the trick because you don't get any of the lens distortion you get on things like Insta360s, GoPros, or old cameras that are used to film videos like these. And we can do that by going to the camera type and switching this over to a panoramic version. Now we'll get that fisheye look and we'll see it's uh, rather intense at the moment. Hey, maybe that's what you want. If you want to just expand this all the way out, you could just increase the field of view until you have the full frame, and boom, you have a super wide angle looking lens. It is essentially just a fisheye. However, I like something a little bit less intense than this. I usually pump the lens up to something like 20, and we get a much more realistic look. Honestly, you could pump this up even further. You could go 40. But of course, at that point, you're starting to, you know, get a really high zoom. So that might not be what you want. Today, I'm going to go ahead and set it at 20. And I'm going to say that looks pretty good. But just having the fisheye lens is only half the battle for stuff like this. The next part is actually going to be our animation. It's going to be the person walking around the car, looking at it, making it look all sexy and real. Kind of like as if you were a crowd member at a car show, walking around and looking at a cool car. Click this auto keyframe button. And when we move the camera around now, we'll get a keyframe on our screen. If we go over to the object properties, we'll see that we got a key for the location and rotation. And if we scroll through, maybe you know, 50 frames further, we can move in towards the car a bit. And if we go back to our starting line now and press play, we can see that we get some movement towards the car. But this looks super CG, right? How do we make this look more handheld? Well, it all comes to do with making modifiers on the movement. We're going to add some, you know, jostles, some jiggles, all of that good stuff. So I'm going to open up the graph editor. With the camera selected, we can go over to the graph editor, drop down the camera option until you get these object transforms. And we're mainly going to play around with the rotations. So I'm going to start with the X rotation and I'm going to go over to the modifiers tab. We're going to want to add in a noise modifier. By default, this is going to be very intense. If we play through it, you can see it's super crazy. So we're going to want to bring these back down to some normal levels. For me, 
personally, I found that a scale around negative 12 to 12 works pretty good. So I'm going to say 12 here and bring that strength all the way down to, you know, a tenth of what it is. So a strength of something like 0.1. And now if we play through our footage, we can see we get something a little bit better, but it might even be a little too strong. So we'll bring this down to maybe a scale of 10. We're again going to apply that to the other two rotations. So maybe this time we'll have negative 12 and 0.1 on the strength and on Z we'll do noise and then we'll do maybe negative six and a strength of 0.05 or 0.04. And now if we play through it like this, we can see that it looks much more realistic than it does if we were to do that normally. The only other thing you might wanna do is switch from the Bezier curve that is currently applied to these movements to a linear curve. So we can do that by right clicking and doing interpolation linear. And now it's going to just be from point one to point B and stop instead of kind of slowing down like it did before at the end here. Once your animation is complete, it's time to render it. And here's a little secret sauce to how to really mess up your render and make it look dirty and old when you're rendering. The very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go over to the advanced tab in your render settings and make sure that the use animated seed option is checked here. You'll just click on this clock and it will turn blue and that's how you'll know it's working. The second thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you've disabled denoise. We really don't need it for something like this. Honestly, usually noise is the devil, but having a bit of noise in scenes like this looks actually pretty realistic, especially when you have an animated scene. Now, something you're gonna do on this that you'll probably never do on any other render is you're gonna switch this over to JPEG. And not just switch it over to JPEG, you're gonna drop that quality. You're gonna drop it down to something like 20, maybe even 15. And this is really going to mess up the look of your render. It's gonna look old, it's gonna look you know, blocky, it's gonna look overly compressed. This is something I would never recommend you do professionally. However, in order to get this kind of you know, Instagram, old beat up look in footage, it actually works perfectly. You don't need to do crazy filters. You just need to drop that quality down. Something you can also do to help yourself even further would be dropping your resolution. The last thing I do for essentially any render is I always add in a volume box. Now I have a little plugin called Simple Fog that I've made for myself. So I'm gonna go ahead and import a volume cube here using it. And we'll just line this up with our scene. And if we look through our camera with that enabled, we can see we get all of our hazes and our, our glows that we are used to. For this scene in particular though, I think my density is a little high, so I'm gonna set this to maybe 0.1. If you wanna learn how to create a volume box like this, you can click on the link that's up in the top corner of your screen now. That is to an older version of Blender when I made this. However, I am going to be releasing an updated version because they've changed some things. And I'm probably gonna release this plugin on its own for free eventually in the future. I'm just not personally happy with it at the moment. And render out a frame and then we'll pop in a nuke and do the rest of our post effects over in Nuke and we can see exactly how our render turned out. And I'm not sure how well it turned out on video uh, over on YouTube here, but man, this looks great from the start. It's got that noise that's dithering throughout the screen. We got all those blocky artifacts that make it really sold as a fake effect or a VHS kind of look. But there are a few things we can do to dirty this up even further. The first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is just a few basic color corrects with a color correct node, and that's going to be bringing down that saturation just a bit, because in general, CG stuff is usually a little oversaturated. The next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is bring that contrast back just a little bit more, maybe just a tad for something like this render, like 1.1, and then we can bring the saturation down even further. And honestly, for a render like this, you really don't need to do much else. We can also add some lens uh, like grease slash bloom, whatever you would want to call it. The easy way to do that, of course, is just add a blur node and a merge node and just merge A over B and switch that to something like plus. So now it's A plus B. And if we blur this out a bit, something like this, we can get that kind of like hazy look. And then if we switch these, so it's A over B like this, we can just control you know, the intensity, maybe a mix of just something like 0.14, and we're all of a sudden getting that kind of smudged camera look on our render. But already, I think that looks super messed up. It looks super old and somewhat realistic. 
honestly, because we added that noise by animating it over in Blender, we really don't need to throw noise on top of it. But if you wanted to, my favorite plugin to use is going to be Lumagrain. But honestly, yeah, look, at something like this, you don't really need it. But of course, you can just to get that extra level of spice. But that's been it from me today, guys. I've been Alex from Level Up Plus VFX. You should now have everything you need to do to make your own handheld VHS looking scene where you have a car in a video game environment. If you like this video, go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to see more content like this, Blender stuff, and I actually have a giant nuke course coming, just a few things need to come together before I can release that, subscribe for me. I need you to do it right now. It'll help the channel a lot, and I can make more videos like this. Either way, that's it for you guys. Peace. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no